welcome back to episode four of season two of Truth Talk. Uh, we are jumping back in our discussion of, um, you know, what are the foundations of, of who we are as Christians, what we believe. Uh, last week we spent some time talking about God and who he is. And really, I know for me, I, I, Dad and I had some discussions that it seemed very short episode for such a, a, a topic. But Wrong really... Topic. Re realistically, every discussion we have, every episode is about God mm -hmm. and who he is and how he reveals himself to us. So um, we really just kind of wanted to get into just that broad-based knowledge and definition to make sure, you know, we are, you know, we're setting um, the standard that God is and there is no other God. And so from that comes forth the other topics of, of what we believe and um, this week we're going to get into scripture and what is scripture and, and, and really probably lots of conversation about scripture because this is one of those topics that is just um, just the gift that keeps giving, really. I mean, and that is why scripture is unique um, as a literary work but also as a living work. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to get into that um, just in case anybody's wondering. I did have to include the desk because my, my, I felt like stuff was sliding everywhere. So in attempts, I have to have my, I'm not like the preachers here. I just, they just come with their knowledge. All their knowledge. <laughs> it's just ready to, to gift right. it to us. But I do, I, I do try to do some study and prepare myself for these conversations. And I've got to have it all laid out. Otherwise, I just feel like I'm rambling. So um, I had to get myself a little desk here so we get started. So the Bible. God's word. Um, I was just looking at the, the name Bible comes from the Greek word biblos, which is just literally the book, mm -hmm. you know. And um, but I, I feel like, you know, what are what are some of those? I think a good way to start this conversation is, is, you know, we say scripture. So what does that mean? You know, and I feel like I always say and I hear y'all say a lot, you know, the word of God, which I feel like is the most is a very appropriate way of referring to the scripture so so start us off you know daddy when we talk about scripture um specifically what we are referring to and um you know why this is a special set of stories well first of all the bible itself the scripture itself declares what it is we get it says all scripture is inspired by god is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be thoroughly furnished in all good works you got to underline that's there. right that, that would be um first timothy three second timothy second three, timothy three. sorry I'm, yes, it's right here <laughs> second timothy three uh Verse 16. 16. That's correct. So, so, so we get our basis, and, 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 and we're not doing circular thinking. And I know uh, sometimes folks are accused when we discuss the Bible, well, you do circular thinking when you do those type of arguments. But we, we do get our authority because this is the God-breathed Word. Mm -hmm. And he breathed out his Word through various men over about a 1,500-year period of time, which in itself is an amazing thought that you can take a unified message and breathe it into various men uh, over a 1500 year period and yet have this cohesive message. Mm -hmm. Some of them were royalty, uh, some of them were fishermen, some of them were farmers, some were educated, some were uneducated. I mean just the mm -hmm. complete uh, variety of people from different circumstances and uh, yet when you put the uh, Bible together it is contextually a unit. It, mm -hmm. it, 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 if you take any part of that out of it it is not the whole that it should be and so uh, that is that is what makes scripture so unique other than any work. I mean, you've got all kind of classic literature mm -hmm. uh, out there, but there's no other piece of literature that comes down to us that can claim what the Bible can claim, right. and that is that it has been breathed out literally from God, mm -hmm. inspri inspired. And so that gives us our basis to start to, to begin to draw on how we can understand what the Bible is and what it brings to us. That's right. I mean, and... In, in it uses, you know, we, from, from a 
specifically literary work, it combines all the different sources of of types of literature. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you got poetry, you've got um, narrative, yeah. you've got law, you know, and history. liturgical, you know, and history, history drama, prophet, you got it, prophecy. It, you know, you got. Mm -hmm. All this combined, and, what, and, like, and like you said, I, I wrote some of that myself, is that, you know, that it, it is the only book where you have consistency from so the beginning to the end. With, with all the different mm -hmm. authors, because they were divinely inspired. Right. And, I mean, we've talked about this quite a bit in the study of Daniel, that there's so much... Uh, there, there's this sect of people who don't be, that believe Daniel was written in the second century BC because of how much, how accurate mm -hmm. his prophecy was, yeah. you know, and that well that is because it is divinely inspired, mm -hmm. you know, and Daniel is quite frank in his recount of his life that that God gave him this vision of what was to come, mm -hmm. yet yet people still want to push that into, um, you know, that oh no he had to be from a different time period although. History. And They've said the same thing about Isaiah right. because his prophecies were 700 years before the coming of Christ and how exact it was, especially when we look at some of the, the crucifixion text, right. mm -hmm. Isaiah 53, and how you know just mm -hmm. in line it was to what Jesus would do. And all you got to do is truly study our biblical archaeology to know mm -hmm. that those are false assumptions to say they were written that close to Christ. No, they were written hundreds and hundreds of years before right. his coming. Mm -hmm. Um. I, the Bible is is God's own His written record to us of His story. You know, I think that's one thing we we can um, be accused of a lot of times. And I think I think we are very I think Christians in general and people who read the Bible can can be accused of and be guilty of picking and choosing passages that suit you know their purposes. Mm -hmm. But you know. Like Dad said, you know, pointing back to this this passage from Second Timothy, the whole is what you have to look at, mm -hmm. and it tells, like Daddy said, that unified story, and it never loses that thread the whole way through. Right. And how Christ is that center. Mm -hmm. um, I think you've done it several times in your messages, where um, you know you can take every book of the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation and find. Christ in each mm -hmm. chapter, in each book, mm -hmm. um, where he is the center there, the center message, no matter what's taken place in history, before he was born, after his death, and so on, that he, he's there mm -hmm. in, every, in every part. And I think when you, when you find that, it brings the scriptures so much mm -hmm. more to life as a believer mm -hmm. um, to, and to find that, that key that intertwines everything. There in Jason Macon, remember his name, I can't remember at the moment, is a, one of our Bible teachers or preachers in the past says, what you do to the Bible is open the Bible up, go to a passage and make a beeline to Jesus. Mm -hmm. so you, uh, you find where yeah, Jesus... Was Spurgeon. Spurgeon was Spurgeon was the one uh, that, okay, that said that. And so, uh, and, that, and that is true of the Bible. That's what you do is uh, you, you find that connection uh, that, that is there. But you also, what 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 you what is so wonderful about that is it's also a tremendous piece of literature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to demean the Bible. I love the Bible, and I believe it is the inspired, infallible, inerrant Word of God. But it's also, it, if it was if it was just literature, it's amazing. it is an amazing piece of literature. Mm -hmm. And so I think I think some of us miss that sometime, and we need to show that to folks. It it, it might be to some people that gateway that would bring them mm -hmm. to a place that they could mm -hmm. find Jesus. And uh, so it is an amazing piece of literature. Or they, you know, like we've talked about somewhat in the past, how people start really thinking about world history and then seeing some of the events that are recording in Scripture, seeing how mm -hmm. they parallel mm -hmm. and how the Bible records right. human history itself. Mm -hmm. and, and that way we say, well, what's up with this? Why is this saying the same thing? Mm -hmm. history in our history books yeah, say. Yeah. If you do apologetics, and, and that's a good thing, that's one of the things you do is you lay the Bible side by side history and say the Bible accurately, when, it is not a history book, but when it tells history, records history, it accurately records what's going on. And occasionally 
for years and years, sometimes centuries, folks say, oh, no, the Bible is wrong because here is something that we can't find in history. But then biblical archaeology would come along and say, oops, here yep. it is. We found yep. it. And we found it. <laughs> and and the people like the Philistines, oh, there's no such thing. The Bible records the Philistines, and we don't find any record. And all of a sudden, bam, bam yeah. here come the Philistines out of the pages of history right on the scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, other folks are very much like that is, And so we see our Bible Always, if the Bible says it happened, it happened. It happened when it says, and history will always line up with that when correct history is put beside of it. So that's, that's one of the wonderful things about the Bible is you, you don't have to come and approach it yeah. hesitantly in and, a tentative and, and form. A, another thing, you know, how can we under, you know, know the, the Bible is 100% truth, mm -hmm. reliable, factual, the Word of God. Well, I mean, if, if, if you were look at some of these stories and you and I were writing them and we know all the baggage and garbage that happened behind the scene, we might embellish that a little bit, cover it up because we don't want that to taint our reputation or taint our family tree, what so to speak. The Bible is very clear about many of the people's sins, what they did. I mean, to where people are, you know, uh, Daughters are getting somebody drunk to mm -hmm. sleep with the father. You know, we wouldn't we or wouldn't write that of type Samson. of stuff down. Right. In the New Testament, a woman's <laughs> testimony would not hold up in legal court. Yet, mm -hmm. the gospel writers say the women were the first ones to go and declare the resurrection of the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. I mean, we would we would change that a little bit to yeah. make it more. Re but no, they they didn't, and and. and those th those things point to like okay, why then? Yeah. Because it is it is what it is. Take one of the central figures, King David. You would never. I mean, he's the strong That's king. It, you would king. never show no, him. You would not say nothing about him. No, he he would always be the hero, bright and shining armor. But no, he's revealed in all of his shortcomings. That's right. That's one of the things I, I wrote that the Bible is not human imagination or speculation. We would have edited out the parts that reveal our ugliness. Mm -hmm. if, if, if these biblical authors were writing underneath their own inspiration, mm -hmm. they would not have revealed the yeah. depth of their ugliness Absolutely. and depravity because they would not have wanted to open yeah. themselves up to that, especially considering the culture that they lived in. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to take things. I think this is what we do to our detriment sometimes is we don't put things in the culture that it was written in. So if you, if you, again, we talked a little bit last week about that honor shame society that is very, um, very prevalent, prevalent in, in Middle Eastern culture. Mm -hmm. You do not do anything to bring shame to your family name. Yeah. So there's no way Moses would have written a lot of the detail about the family of God mm -hmm. and the early characters within the family of God to the, to, to your point, mm -hmm. Noah. And his drunkenness, yeah. and his his um, re relationship with yeah. his daughters, you know, and all or that. Or go back stuff. to Abraham. Well, let's just leave Ishmael and all that out. Yeah. Hagar, That's we right. don't need yeah. to talk yeah. about. We'll just talk about. Mm -hmm. But no. Yeah. God wanted that whole story to be revealed. Well, and that's part of the purpose of Scripture, right. too. Is the Scripture is what reveals to us our sin, mm -hmm. but also gives us the pathway to get out of sin. You know, like. Psalm 119, you hide the word in your heart so that you might not sin mm -hmm. against God. And so if you don't see the ugly, mm -hmm. then the ugly doesn't get revealed. Our own ugliness, our own sinfulness doesn't get revealed to us. Um, and then, you know, like in 2 Timothy, it says it's there for correction. Mm -hmm. It's there for conviction. Mm -hmm. so. That's right. But you have to also remember that there was other literature about other people's gods being written at this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And their gods and their literature did not show that their people were bad. It didn't show the, the ugly. No, no, it, it was written <laughs> with a human viewpoint, mm -hmm. and their gods were always bright and shining and perfect, and mm -hmm. their people always were victorious. And Above as a matter of fact, if you go back, and one of the arguments against the Exodus is that when you go back and read the journals of the Egyptians during that period of time, there's no record of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt. Well, you know why? 
Because they would never do right. that. You mm -hmm. would never say that something like that. A happened. million people escaped from Pharaoh your. Pharaoh was worshipped as God. God right, yeah, right. you would you never do say anything that. to make him feel inferior, you know, look mm -hmm. inferior, or as if he had done anything mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. Especially not when so many of them perished mm -hmm. right, yeah. during so, that time. So that would be that would never have been put into the record. Th that shows the difference in what was the inspired record versus what was the. Man common record. man record mm -hmm. of that day. And you'll see, if you go back and read the literature, it's obvious when you read the literature of the Canaanite gods or you read the, uh, the literature of the uh, different uh, uh, deities and things, mm -hmm. and then you read the Bible, you are almost amazed that the Bible is with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's because it is yes. God's word. Mm -hmm. When you look, and we don't always see that. We, we live, most of us live in a narrow tunnel. And we, we've read our Bible, we love our Bible, and we never get outside that tunnel. And I'm not trying to, I'm not saying that in a, in a negative way. I'm saying that's just the world we live in. But, but, but there was worlds going on there. And when you begin to look at that and see how the Bible is written, it makes it even more Again, like, yeah, like what we talked about last week was knowing why all these laws in Leviticus are given was because the children of Israel were camped in the midst of a pagan culture that were doing things like human sacrifice mm -hmm. and bigamy and really horrible idolatry and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason, I mean, you have to, you need to understand that is why, I mean, there are just some crazy laws given mm -hmm. in the book of Leviticus. If you spend time in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you're just going to be, you know, beat over the head with this, you know, if this, then this type situation. But that is because it, you need to know your context. You need to know your context. Mm -hmm. And so if you just, you know, lackadaisically pick up your scripture and you're trying to to um, to find out information mm -hmm. or prove a point yeah. to somebody, which I feel like is what we do a lot of times as Christians, we're trying to prove our point Defense. rather than letting the Spirit work through you. Um, you are, you're, you're miss, if you miss that context that, that, that it's referenced in, then you're missing out mm -hmm. on those layers mm -hmm. you know the bible is a progressive book daddy talked to we talk about that a lot and daddy talked about that this morning you know it, re, it doesn't just reveal itself to you one time that's why you know it's a living and breathing thing because it mm -hmm. continues to reveal um it's it it's mysteries right. and it's revelations to you mm -hmm. the more you um, the more you look through it and the more you dig through it. And, and, and that's... And sometimes we might not have, you know, you, you alluded to a little bit about people being tunnel vision. Maybe we have not done a, a, a good enough job, per se, of mm -hmm. showing people how to look at Scripture in its context, not just the grammatical context mm -hmm. in which we find it in a book, but go beyond that to the historical context. What's the background mm -hmm. information? What's going on here? And... And when you see certain things in Scripture, like, you know, if Jesus is teaching or somebody else, like, well, why did he say that yeah. at that particular moment? Yeah. Well, if you know some of the geographical right. background, historical background, you understand that's exactly, mm -hmm. you know, why he said and that. And that's the challenge in preaching because uh, you do and I do. I watch people when I preach. Mm -hmm. I'm watching their faces. I'm watching their body language. I, I want to see what's going on. That's just what I do. Some folks can't do that, and that's okay. But I do. I, I enjoy that. And that's one of the reasons I, I don't use extensive notes when I preach. I memorize, and I'm, I, I can do that. But So I can wa watch folks. And if you get too far into context, mm -hmm. e either grammatical context or yeah, historical, you, you can them. see it in their eyes. You can see it on their face. Mm -hmm. You can see them begin to let down go their eyes. Pages begin to turn, or heads begin to nod, and you, you can lose a congregation. There's two or three out there that you can see are yeah. soaking it in, soaking mm -hmm. that they need that. And there's a great group out there that if you're not careful, mm -hmm. you'll... Yeah. Or maybe right. it should be done better at the Bible study time, like Sunday school or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Right. But like you said, there's just not a lot of people who just... A really but, if, but if they... But, but somehow is, if we could... It's important. If we could teach our people how to study mm -hmm. the living word yeah it will just come up more well, alive to them and they'll begin to understand it and, yeah. and, and, and you do and I do I try to do that I try to interject that and uh, and I push the limits on that in, in, in doing it I uh, I give more and more and more and in the COVID world where at, at our church 
we we haven't got back to a full choir and all of that yet. So they crazily turned the service over to me at five minutes after eleven or ten minutes after eleven. Well, we got time now. And then yeah. I'll yeah I don't. So I'm we not, get thirty minutes of historical context. Yes. <laughs> and thirty Which minutes for of, me, and then thirty minutes of preaching. That's right. And Which, all the Isabella people are saying, "Oh, we're so glad we got the choir going back." <laughs> thirty minutes <laughs> of context and thirty minutes of application. Right. Is that what it Which is? Which for me is great because I love context. Yeah. You know, but you can tell. I mean, you can tell who doesn't. Yeah. And but you, I mean, I will say I, that. At our church, it's become more and more people enjoy it. And mm -hmm. I think you just have to to have you have to feed that diet. So yeah, you have to. And, because and your average you, Bible you, reader that's you know your young your young adult is really looking for application. Mm -hmm. They're looking for okay, this Bible is supposed to be mm -hmm. alive. It's supposed to be my instruction manual. What am I supposed to do with it? Mm -hmm. What is it saying to me in the context of where I am in my life? Mm -hmm raising my family or getting this job or existing in the world or culture that we live in today, how is this supposed to be relevant to me? How is it supposed to speak to me? And if a me? pastor will go somewhere and stay planted, you've been here at Antioch 25 years. I've been in Isabella going on 14. Your people get to know you mm -hmm. and understand you and mm -hmm. then they begin to have an appreciation for what you do. And it's that long term where you start to see the big, mm -hmm. the big dividends in your people's right. lives. Mm -hmm. and it, it, this is vital to Scripture, and I don't know that we've we've properly positioned it. Scripture is to be listened to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you read Scripture or hear hear or someone else, you're to listen to what's going on. You, you're to hear that voice of God. God is a speaking God. Mm -hmm. we, we miss that sometimes of all the other, no other God can, there are no mm -hmm. other gods, I understand, but mm -hmm. the, the, all the voices out there. There is no other speaking God that can truly speak. Mm -hmm. And God starts off in Genesis 1 yeah. speaking, speaking and he doesn't quit. And the Jewish existence. people realize that. Yes. Because mm -hmm. they knew when they saw that, mm -hmm. that was God speaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you open, what I've tried to teach our folks is when you open the book and you start reading it, don't just read the book. Listen, what is God saying? Mm -hmm. and, and as you begin to do that, you, yeah. you begin to hear what he, and, and to hear that, you've got to know the context. Mm -hmm. You've got to know some of the history. And then it begins to come alive. Yeah. And those passages that you just used to just zoom by, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, God begins to speak to you out of those passages. And, and allow the book to read you right. yes. as you're yeah. reading it. That's right. And, and use your resources. We have so many resources now to, to give yourself time to understand. I was listening again to one of our podcasts that we listen to. And, you know, so they always talk about kind of what their scripture reference is, you know, everything. And, and I try to go back and look at that. But he was saying that if you study the life of Jesus, you know, he starts out in Galilee when his ministry begins. And he has a very different tone when he's away from Jerusalem than he does when he is in Jerusalem. You know, and they're like, if you notice these things when he's talking, who his audience is mm -hmm. depends on the way his message is delivered. You know, and, and that is why we as Christians need to adopt that same, um, you know, sensitivity to your audience and understanding that because a lot of times we want to take our scripture and beat people over the head with it you know and and jesus did that at the appropriate time mm -hmm. um, with the appropriate audience it usually would be the religious audience right. that would catch his ire and then that person the woman at the well or the mm -hmm. adulteress that, and that would was be the, the application one. yeah that would be the one he'd never say sin was good he would mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. do that but he would handle that circumstance and if you read the scripture like that the scripture is sensitive to to the different points in your life mm -hmm. just just as it's progressive in its telling of God's story it's progressive in its revealing in your life so you know, when you are being sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you through the Scripture, it's not going to just, I mean, not, not to say it wouldn't happen, but more than likely, it's just not going to come out there and beat you over the head with how horrible of a person you are. And it's going to show you God's love. God's love, right. You know, and, and His His desire for your life. You know, it points us from, you know, the beginning when God created the earth to how man fell, but in, to the end and how He's coming back to redeem his creation. 
So if you look at that, like the story that unfolds, that is how we as Christians should utilize scripture in, in, in our personal application, but also in how we deal with the world and the troubles that come to us through the world. I think one of the greatest helps in scripture is one of the greatest hurts in scripture when it comes to this, and that is our modern chapter verse division right. of the Bible. Man, wonderful help when I can tell my audience, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 10, verse so-and-so. But we chop the scripture up too when we go and divide mm -hmm. it because it was not originally written in a chapter verse format. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it was written depending on what and thoughts, genre, and groups of thoughts, and, mm -hmm. and what genre of scripture it was mm -hmm. written in, how how it was written. And so sometimes you just miss the entire flow of thought that God is wanting to speak to you through by breaking it up. And, and so I recommend folks get them a good Bible that that does not have chapter and verse division. And there's some good ones out there mm -hmm. that, that you can read it in, in paragraph or in mm -hmm. manuscript form rather than reading it like we do. I, I'm talking about study. You need your, everybody needs a, definitely, I'm thankful mm -hmm. that, that right. what was around the 1300s, 12, 1300s, that we uh, had it divided up into the uh, chapter verse division similar that we have now. But but it also, if you want to listen for God to speak to you, mm -hmm. you need to get a version that doesn't have that. So you can begin to see the flow of Scripture. Well, and that just kind of leads into there are different ways to study the Bible. There's, Absolutely. you know, those ways where um, you guys preach um, expositorily. Is that a word? Yes. Um, where you go through verse by verse and sometimes word by word and you, you take it apart in order to deliver the exact meaning that is behind each and every verse. But there are other ways to study scripture and, you know, and depending on what it is you're trying to draw from it. If, like you said, you're trying to listen, there's those those Bibles that are written for that. If you're trying to find a specific meaning, you know, the study Bibles that are out there. And, and so there's different ways to, to study mm -hmm. depending on where you are and, and what your purpose is and whether, you know, it's your time that you've devoted and, and how much you've devoted to, to that particular sit down, uh, to read. And I know, um, a long, long time ago, I was telling Jason when I was kind of getting more interested in the historical mm -hmm. uh, concepts and, and aspects of the Bible, I was like, do they make a Bible that's written in chronological order? Because you can't tell me that this book came before <laughs> this book, but it's after that book in the Bible. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And so, I ha like, they have chronological Bibles mm -hmm. that yeah, hubby do. you went and bought me one because you're so good. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I mean, it's this thick, but it it's is confusing. It is. For a novice, <laughs> yes. for a novice studier to, for like us, it, it's, and I don't know. Our brains are so it. number yes. order yeah. that we think that Genesis and then this should happen and this and that should all we'll just fall. Line. So we were, Daddy was <laughs> preaching out of, we're, of course, we're in Daniel right now, but we always have a um, reference, we always, we, we have a scripture reading and then we get into our study. And Daddy was talking about um, Esther, because we were, we were talking about something specific because we're in the part of Daniel where it's talking about the coming um, kingdoms like the four horns and the little horn and all that stuff and he's like and this is pointing to you know if you go back and you read the book of Esther well if you look at your Bible you got to go back to Daniel's go right here and you go way <laughs> it, it, back the, over here to get the Esther. The Old Testament's just laid out in genres. Yeah. Right. You have the law and then you have But the, if you look at where yeah. she was Esther would actually be over here past yeah. you know right. all the prophets you know right. and everything right. so well, it you, is for you come order. up to Ezra and Nehemiah you come up to Nehemiah that's the whole history you mm -hmm. stop and you do the the uh the uh, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, po and then wisdom you, literature. poetry. Mm -hmm. Then you start the history with the prophets almost back over yes. again until mm -hmm. you come to, to the end, Malachi. Well, Malachi and Nehemiah are, you know, Contemporary. Well, not quite, but pretty well, much I mean, alike. Yeah. Well, like yeah. First Kings, Second Kings, and First Second Chronicles, they're the same, mm -hmm. yet from different perspectives, points, perspectives mm -hmm. and points of view. Mm -hmm. So you you have to see that and know. But if you don't know that, but if you don't, and that's it. That's what I was telling Jason earlier when we were kind of talking before we came. I was like, you know, we could do like this may be like a part two segment or something where we just talk about how the Bible that we have today came to be the way it is, the way it's organized, why it's organized in that manner, because I feel like that is something that we are weak in, mm -hmm. that your average church goer who, you know, may have their 20, 30 minute devotional mm -hmm. time every day, mm -hmm. who tries to do their reading and 
and fit it into this busy we, lifestyle we that we live. We showed a video of that at church one night right. about how how we got what we got. And you know, a lot of people are like, wow, thank you. That was so informative. Yeah. But I'm also, I'm some more confused, more confused than now than ever because it can't, it can't I, be. I drew it out. You may yeah. have it in there or, uh, for I our Bibles. I, yeah. I had our folks go to their content page it's, um, and it's, uh, we I drew out the Bible and how it's arranged you can put it in your uh, your con in your table of contents there and do that and I'm trying to think of the author that does that so he's a great author that does that and his name will not come to my mind right now but I will get it and give it out mm -hmm. over this because uh, he's one of those authors everybody needs to have in there uh, in, 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 if you're especially right. if you're going to be a teacher or if you're going to be a student, he, he's one of those. And if it's, if it doesn't come to mind, I will uh, I will get his name. And uh, yeah, and some you know just like going back to the Old Testament, some don't realize how some of the things were passed down by oral tradition right. before mm -hmm. they were ever started. Mm -hmm. You know, laying it down on page. Yeah, well, all, all well, that that uh, Moses, Moses wrote, wrote. It had to have been <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I mean, because that happened way before that's Moses. Right. That's, that's right. right. Well, but, before his time yeah. was, you know, the, the first, first five, twelve. Yeah, well, um, not all of them. Well, but at least most of Gen twelve chapters of Genesis. Yeah, yeah but, that's what I'm saying. At least the first twelve chapters of Genesis were strictly oral tradition. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and then you get into more that may have been written in some sort after that leading up to to his mm -hmm. life that you get into and then people point well you know like well okay the bible says you know a literal creation and there's others who point toward evolution but if you look at some of these great um like frank turk and norman geisler mm -hmm. they did a book i don't have enough faith to be an atheist mm -hmm. and they're making the point in their book you have to have more faith to believe there is not a creator mm -hmm. than a creator in the first half of that book, they never bring God into the equation, mm -hmm. N not once. And they're just showing how science mm -hmm. proves the first few chapters of the book of Genesis. Right. It doesn't disprove it. It proves mm -hmm. it more and more. And then they lure you, okay, and then they show, okay, this is... This, this is what God did. Yeah. Yeah. And that's they a good great every, job every, of that. Everyone ought to have that book. Yes. That is, right. uh, even if you don't... If apologetics is not your thing and you don't want to go out, that gives you just such a good foundation yes. to uh, to be For scripture, to, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, just, just to be able to yeah. defend. Um, and I think people maybe misunderstand when we use defend. It's not right. that it's an argumentative thing. It's a, to know to know what you're not. Yeah. An understanding you know, to of To be life. able to mm -hmm. talk um, passionately but also knowledgeably yeah. right. about but, about. Well, and it's the what number one is. argument that people come to yeah. when you yeah. start trying to present the Bible to someone is, well, you can't tell me that it's all truth because man wrote it. Mm -hmm. Like no man can write anything. And, and you know, and, and for people who are not believers or who uh, don't understand faith and and don't, and you can't get to the point where you are able to explain and prove to them mm -hmm. all these things in that one quick or one brief moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's the first thing we're always faced with is, well, how do you know that it's all true? Uh, you know, and... Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to have You've that discussion to to without, without bringing your faith or bringing God. Or bring, so, and and mm -hmm. that, that particular book does a great job yes, it does. of doing that. And I think we also need to... I, I challenged our people, particularly in our discipleship class. You know, you hear people all the time, I just need my Bible, that's it. And I, and I agree, that should be your main. But there are men and women that God have blessed mm -hmm. with wisdom and knowledge mm -hmm. on that book right. that you need to be reading behind. And mm -hmm. if you want to broaden your horizon or gain more knowledge of the scripture and just different things, you need to read. Mm -hmm. You yeah. need to read different, uh, you need to be careful who you read behind. Yeah, that's right. But there is a, like you said earlier, Luke, there's a vast and, treasure trove of wisdom mm -hmm. out there. What you, there's no excuse for you to be biblically illiterate. And when you look, and we're, we're going to probably have to go over now and, right. and go, but when you look at the Bible and how we have, we have it here because of the folks that wrote it and then looked after it, they wrote about the Bible and they discussed the Bible and they, that's how the Bible got carried forward to us. These people had arguments about what should be and shouldn't mm -hmm. be and wrote. Yeah, what book should be in the canon? canon. And, and then they wrote commentaries. They yes. was what we don't realize is there's commentaries written by Jewish folks on the books of the Bible, mm -hmm. and and they tell us what they believe those things meant. Now, 
are they inspired? No, but no. but we get their mind on those things. So before me and you or this modern age ever come, there was commentaries by before Jesus came. There was commentaries being written on what these books stood for. So yeah. well, I mean, you have all this intertestament um, um, literary works that that are not part of our Bible. Why They're, don't you? Uh, Take okay. us out of this I, and I we'll am. move I'm over trying, to the next one. I want to talk right about now. that in the next one. If you'll let me finish do what it I'm then. saying, I'm going, <laughs> going to do that. <laughs> but, um, so we're going to wrap up this gonna, section <laughs> and we're going to go to part two. This is the only, over. this is what happens when all of us are related <laughs> <laughs> and when we're doing all this. But, but we do, I do want to, um, I was going to, because we were talking about, um, Resources, and I have an old resources, and I'm lucky that um, I have a vast treasure trove of Dad's library <laughs> that I can pick through right. when I'm looking for some material. And all of his stuff's old. I'm introducing him I'm to, the, to the new <laughs> stuff. But um, so this is Hallie's. Is that Hallie or Haley? Haley. Haley's Bible Handbook, and um, it's old. And um, I was looking for a date here. I mean, it's like it's in. Mm. It's written in Greek. Yes. 1962 was the 23rd edition. So it was already <laughs> old in 1962. But um, it, the, there's this portion of it that's Christ is the, is the center and heart of the Bible. And um, it says, it, it, gets, it gets into a lot of stuff, but it says, um, it is a glorious thing to be a Christian, the most exalted privilege of mankind, to accept Christ as Savior, Lord, and Master, and to strive sincerely and devotedly to follow the, in the way of life, which is taught and is certainly by far the most reasonable and most satisfactory way to live. It means peace, peace of mind, contentment of heart, forgiveness, happiness, hope, life, life here and now, and life abundant, life that shall never end. How can anyone be so blind or so dumb as to go through life and face death without the Christian hope? Apart from Christ... What is there and what that can there be for either this world or the next? And that is what the Bible gives us. Mm -hmm. You know, that hope, that consistent hope from beginning to end that, that if you take it and study it and understand it and use those extra tools and resources, it is there to help you have a life more abundant. So we're, we have more conversation about scripture because there is a lot to get into with as far as how it was compiled mm -hmm. and why it was compiled and what was what's not in it mm -hmm. that could have been in it were right. it not for the inspiration of God. So we'll get into that in our next episode. And we will um, see you then. Do let us know. We are still looking for questions that we can discuss, that we can talk about during our roundtable. That's going to be kind of our... Uh, mid-season um, stopping point. So send those uh, questions to abcworth1 at gmail.com and we look forward to seeing and hearing more about Scripture next week.